If you've ever seen anything 3D like Unreal or Unity and you're a coder like me, you've probably wondered how do you actually make that? Because 2D is pretty straightforward. I mean, you could make something with Pi Game, you could make something in the terminal. 2D is really simple. But once you start getting to that third dimension, everything becomes like a whole lot com more complicated. And so in this video, I'm going to try to show y'all the simplest way you can implement 3D in, you know, whatever. That way you don't have to download the 40 gigabytes or whatever of Unity to actually run anything 3D. Now, it will be a little bit more complicated than Unity and you will have to implement things yourself. But it's always helpful if you understand the concepts behind some of your favorite software. Now, to actually render something in 3D, there's really two main ways to do it. And, I mean, the first way is a more complicated way. The second way uses a lot of the functions in the first way, but it makes it a whole lot simpler. And I'm going to teach you the second way. That way it's as simple for y'all to understand. And honestly, the first way, you don't really need to understand how it works. You just need to, like, copy and paste the code and know what it does. But in the first way, you'll actually understand what's happening. So the way that's really complicated is using matrices or matrices and that i don't even understand that i haven't tried to understand it besides like reading through a couple of documents and being completely and utterly bamboozled i'm pretty sure donut.c was made using matrix 3 rendering methods and it simplifies a whole lot of stuff if you actually understand what to do but the way i actually want to do it i think it's like called ray casting anyways it's basically where you look at the points and you control the points and you render each of the points onto the screen and it's it's a little different and anyways you don't really need to know a lot about that we're just going to get right into it and i'm going to tell you we're going to import a couple of different libraries so we have java awt which by the way i'm using java for this one because i really want to learn java this is actually my first java program and two, because Java's class system can actually be really helpful for something like 3D rendering and stuff where you really want to like repeat a whole lot of your code. So anyways, we use java.awt, which is a lot of uh, key listeners, graphics, colors, java.util. I, I don't know what that means, but it has a lot of important stuff like sets and lists and arrays and stuff. Then we have Java ja, Javax dot swing, which is the actual two D rendering software that we eventually use, because I'm uh, I at first I wanted to code this in the terminal, but that seems really complicated, and it really using something like JFrame where you can uh, or JPanel I don't know which one does which honestly, but and using all this stuff to where you can actually draw shapes like a triangle rather than actually figuring out how to draw a triangle it makes it makes it a whole lot easier and it really doesn't make sense to implement that on your own because you're still doing the 3d part and now the first thing that we're going to define is a vector for those of you who don't know what a vector is it's going to have uh three coordinates an x and a y and a z that's how we get the 3d so we're going to find the vector and simply set the x y and z values pretty simple now we are going to define a couple of functions and this is a little bit of the complex part which we're jumping right into uh we have the translate rotate x rotate y rotate z and now defining this right here is critical because it makes it a whole lot easier to rotate let's say a triangle by simply rotating all three vectors and then getting the triangle again and now translating simple you do x plus x change y plus y change z plus z change and now this is going to be the rotating is going to be a part where i'm saying you know just go with the flow because you really don't need to understand what this does it uses some geometry concepts like cosine and sine and if i really had to i could probably figure out how to explain this but for the purpose of this video you just need to know that using the radians of whatever rotation we're gonna have as A. And we have to use different axes, so those are all gonna be different. We use these formulas to basically calculate the new positions 
of the point. And so now we've gone pretty far. Like now we have a vector, a point, a dot on the screen that can be translated or rotated around zero, zero. Now it's critical that I tell you that this is all around zero, zero because in 3D rendering and 3D movement, you want to place a user at zero, zero. And rather than moving the user, you want to move the environment around him. And that makes things a whole lot easier, especially if you were to add a physics for this. But it's just it's just a whole lot simpler. And now our second little class is going to be abstract shape 3D. And now this is going to be for all the different shapes you want to add to our program. Pause. I skipped something. Distance formula. We're going to use that later. For those of y'all who don't know what uh, this is, it's basically a three-way Pythagorean theorem. Back to the shape class. We need a color for the fill because we want this to be colorful. To find the shape with the color. And we're going to have... Uh, abstract functions, translate, rotate, and get triangles, which I'll explain later because triangles are also critical. But these translate functions are basically going to pass down the translate. It's going to, for each shape, it's going to take the translate function and be like, I don't want to actually translate this. Let me pass it down to the next shape until we eventually get to a vector. And the shape that comes right before the vector, which is why we need the get triangles, is the triangle because once again triangles are the most useful and easiest way to draw something so we define the triangle as having a list of x coordinates a list of y coordinates a list of z coordinates and a color and so we create a vector for each of the x y and z coordinates so now the triangle has three vectors and we're building on this and we're going to find the distance as getting the max distance and now this is going to be helpful for layering later which i'll come back to this so you don't not you do don't need to worry about the distance stuff right now that gets into a little bit more complex rendering stuff so we're going to find the function as just simply passing the translate function over to the vectors it's really that simple and the rotate functions we're just going to pass the rotate function on to the vectors and it's really that simple now since it's a triangle we will have render stuff and now this is once again going to be a little bit more complicated so we're going to get a list of the vectors we're basically going to detect when a point is off the screen and we're going to clip it now this is another part that's really complicated and if you really want to you can just know that it clips and be like okay i'm cool with that but essentially, it turns a triangle into a trapezoid, parallelogram, whatever, a four-pointed shape if it needs to. That way, it doesn't go off the screen. Because if it goes off the screen and behind the user, which if it goes fully off the screen, we're just going to not render it at all. But if it goes behind the user without adding this, the triangle is going to be rendered as flipped, which we don't want that to happen. And so we're going to be doing all of that, and we're going to render all the stuff that we need. And then whenever we actually render the triangle and we have the points, we're going to set a color to the fill, and then we're going to draw a polygon on our thing. And so this polygon, or which could end up being a triangle, could end up being a rectangle, doesn't really matter. We're just going to end up drawing that. And so now we have triangles on the screen. And this entire thing is going to be about drawing triangles on the screen. And then once again, the list of triangles, that's going to be useful later um, in the layering system. Because layering is a bit more complicated. You don't need to do that right now. Now we can define a rectangle. Now what is a rectangle made of? Two triangles. So literally all of this is triangles. We pass the translate function onto the triangle, the rotate function, and the get triangles. Uh, well, this one actually can get some triangles because we have two triangles. Once again, for the layering, we can have a box now, which we're just getting multiple rectangles. And this is, it looks weird, but it's just the coordinates for the stuff. And we're getting six rectangles and we're giving it the correct coordinates. That is all we're doing. We're passing a translate function on the rotate function and a triangle function. And then I added a box 
and a square, which cube extends box, square extends rectangle. It's just a little bit easier. I, you can add that. You can add whatever shape you want. I don't know how to do a sphere yet. I'll do a video on that if I figure that out. And we've actually gotten pretty far because now we have the screen, which extends J panel. And now the screen, we can add a shape to the screen. We're going to get to rendering now and layering. So we pass a translate function down onto each of the shapes, the rotate function. And then whenever we have to actually paint components, we're going to go through everything and paint components. And what we're actually going to do right here is we're going to use that priority queue to sort all the triangles, which is why we need to be able to get all of these triangles because we're going to go over each shape and get the triangle. So if it's in a rectangle, we're going to go into that rectangle, get the squares, which is eventually going to get the triangles. And we're going to get a whole lot of triangles. And so we're going to do all of this, all of that, and we're going to end up sorting the triangles by their distance, which is why we have all of those distance formulas. Because we have distance, that way we can get the distance from the user. And it's really easy with the user at 0, 0, because even if the value is negative, even if it's whatever, x times x is always going to be positive. y times y is always going to be positive. And the distance from 0, 0 will always be correct no matter what now the issue with using a distance like a layer rendering formula as distance is that it can create complications where things aren't rendering correctly but for the basic purposes of simple stuff that you make it should be fine like if you're making complex images where things go through each other then it might break a little there's a better way to do that is all i'm trying to say and now we can finally get into the render class, which if you can see to the left is what this whole thing runs when main is called. Now this stuff is actually part of the physics part that I want to impl implement. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that, but you can just ignore that for now. We have the main string and you should not see that. That was my name. And so we're gonna open up the JFAM, uh, J frame. We're gonna set it to the size and the resize. And FOV up here is actually kind of important because um, if I can find it, the FOV is used somewhere in the rendering. I believe it's in the rendering section. Uh, where is it? There we go. So this is where we implement the FOV. It's a little complicated, but the FOV is kind of important. And I've actually end up linking down here. I believe I linked the plus and minus key to adding to the FOV and subtracting the FOV. But back to the main class, we create the colors. And now this whole section right here is me adding shapes. Now I'm adding a wall, a floor, and that's really just about it. And so that's what's actually, we're actually going to try to render. And right here, we're just, this is stuff that you got to do to add key listeners to the screen. And now the key listeners we're going to add isn't up, which moves forward. And now remember, since the user is in zero, zero, moving forward doesn't actually move the user. It moves the environment around him and rotating him doesn't rotate him, it rotates the environment around him. So by simply moving, translating stuff like that, it guarantees we go forward. And we can also go back and we can turn. And that's really as simple as it gets uh, when it comes to 3D rendering stuff. So we can officially go down here. Let me actually open this into an integrated terminal. We can run Javok of render.java should already be rendered. And then we can finally run Java of render and look at what we have. You can see we have the floor, we have the walls, and now I'm pressing my arrow keys right now and I'm rotating around, rotating in a circle. That's kind of cool. And then if I press the up arrow, we move forward. 
And I hope you appreciate the grid pattern that I made because that wasn't the simplest thing to do. But you can notice that the squares look like squares. They don't look like triangles. And these walls, well, they don't have any colliders on, so I can actually go around them. And I can also go back in. And now we can mess with the FOV. I'm pressing minus, which is making my FOV small. And now I don't know if you could see, but there is a little glitch, which is to be expected because if you're looking at the max distance formula, these two points are actually closer than, you know, the other stuff. And that part is a little glitchy. I haven't actually figured out the better way to do that. There definitely is a better way. I just don't know it. We can also bring the FOV in. And it's almost looking like we're zooming. Though if you wonder how video games make that zoom animation, this is how. Anyways, if I wanted to turn this into a really simple and unique game to implement my own concepts, I really could, which is why I love learning, you know, the fundamental principles of whatever. For example, I coded my own AI. I can make a video on that if y'all would like, and that helped me learn a lot about how AI works. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you come back and want me to make another one. Anyways, see y'all later.